This is beautiful. For the next 72 hours, we're gonna be exploring Corfu, one of Greece's most exhilarating and exclusive islands. Wow. Where we uncover an insane airport. That is so cool. Some of its best and most worn out trashed features. This is not what I had in mind. Oh my God, it's freezing. It is like ice. Marinas, of course. We're going window shopping. We're a little depressed since selling our yacht to Kana, but we'll be back sailing in the Med in just a few weeks on a brand new boat. So subscribe if you want to sail with us this summer. There is gonna be a lot to get through in this episode. Like, I don't even know where to begin. So let's begin on how we got here in the first place. While you can fly into Corfu, John and I are on a three week road trip through Greece. Lucky we don't get car sick. I'm editing these videos on route. So far, we've taken you to Athens, where we hide our car. We drove to Delphi and the amazing Meteora, so go back and check those episodes if you miss them. And now, as we drive to the northwest of the country, John and I are about to jump onto our very first ferry to Corfu with our rental car. The ferry leaves from the mainland from a town called Illuminitsa. We're about to head on to the ferry. They pack the belly of the boat pretty tightly with cars, trucks, and buses before lifting the ramp and setting off. Our ferry tickets cost us 35 euro that included both John and my tickets and the car we're gonna be heading upstairs there's an indoor area and an outdoor like observation deck area where you get 360 degree views as we arrive into Corfu I'm really excited to see the old fortress up on the hill and also some of those beautiful marinas as we arrive into the port it's gonna be about an hour hour and a half trip <laughs> Jump in the car. There he is. Hey, okay. how'd you go? You trying to jump in? Yeah, I'm in. Thanks, Susan. This is amazing. So amazing. Do you want to see the sailboat oh, while it's I, here? I took some videos on my phone. The sailboat I'm talking about is Parsifal 3, a 177 foot yacht. How insane was it? Yeah, I know. I want to see it up close. Famous for its appearance on the show Below Deck. 31 knots of wind. Boat's tilting over. Dragon anchor. But unless we had to spare 230,000 euro to hire it for the week, it wasn't happening. Corfu is definitely not what I had imagined. So let's start with our least favorite spots and we'll slowly work up to our number one must see site. So let's start with Sadari Beach. Yeah, this is, <laughs> this is not what I had in mind. Oh man. John and I had purchased some snacks from the supermarket and had hoped to have a picnic on the beach. It's an interesting place, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Drive somewhere else. Do you want to? Sit in the car and eat it. <laughs> some areas are absolutely stunning, but then you have other areas. The beaches are very average. Plastic. Yeah, I'd love to know what you guys think. And while you're in the comments section, if I do miss anything in this vlog, be sure to contribute. We appreciate your travel tips. For example, if this beach is eventually cleaned up, keep us updated. For now though, we're walking a couple of hundred meters away to these beautiful cliffs. We're trying to find a nice flat surface to have our picnic. But to be honest, it feels like I'm on a cross country expedition. Oh my gosh, it's so high. It's like straight down. We're gonna eat all this? We've got so much. Bread. Carbs, beautiful. Olives, vine leaves, an octopus, and tarama. If only we knew that there was an even more romantic spot for lunch just one minute away. This is Canal de Amor, also known as the Channel of Love. It's said that couples who swim together through the channel will have everlasting love and will stay together forever, which is why it's become such a popular place for couples and honeymooners to visit. There's also a heap of hotels, restaurants, and cafes. So let's get our bearings just really quickly. We're all the way up here in the north. And while we're up this way, we're about to drive over to Cape Drastus and Gravis Cove. Now, just like all our other episodes as part of our Greece road trip series, I've left a Google map link for you guys in the description below. So feel free to download the pins onto your phone, which will help you navigate your way around the island. This will save you hours of research and time. We've done a lot of the hard work for you here. So if you find the pins helpful, please leave a like or show your support by subscribing to our channel. John just went up these stairs and it's telling me to go up. I'm not really sure what to expect, but let's give it a crack. Okay. Oh wow, okay. Wow. That is unbelievable. Whoa, is that? I 
can see some beautiful islands in the distance. The drone really gives you perspective of the sheer cliffs that extend into the Ionian Sea here. It is taking our breath away. Once we soak it all up, we walk down from the small car park pin that you'll see there if you downloaded that Google map to the Gravasse Cove. If you're going to come to Cape Drastis, I would definitely say to come in the morning because you can see that the afternoon sun is about to set behind the rocks. It's a good little trek to burn some of that food off too. All that tarama we just ate. Turns out there's no beach really down here, just rock and people are sunbathing on towers. It looks a little uncomfortable to be completely honest with you, so we trek back up the hill, while some locals prefer to use these bikes to get up and down. Now you've probably noticed the roads here are really windy and there isn't much lighting and our accommodation is pretty much on the other side of the island. So we're really conscious of the time as we don't want to drive on these roads in the dark. So we have to get a move on. So explain the road conditions here, John. It's actually a two lane, single lane. As in, it's a single lane road. A lot of the locals are like flying through here, but there's only no, enough so, yeah. bitumen for one lane, essentially, as you can see. Oh my gosh. Wow. How do you get up there? Look at all those houses up there. Next minute, we found the most amazing abandoned home. Check this place out. Shame. I know. Honey, I'm home. What's up? <laughs> As you can see, you can actually cover a lot of ground in just one day. Plenty of driving. I definitely would recommend getting a car. Getting a car allows you to see so much of the island and you're not restricted by the bus timetable. Now you don't have to be an aviation lover or an airline pilot like John to get a kick out of this next spot. That was amazing. Holy oh crap. The adrenaline you'll feel when an enormous jet flies straight over your head on final approach as it gets ready to land just meters above you will get every fiber of your body tingling. The sound, the thrill. That is an absolute master for visiting Corfu. You have to experience that. It's like nothing else I have ever experienced in my life. Wow. This is the Corfu Airport plane spotting observation bridge. Locals fish along here. Tourists come down for sunset. It is just magical. Like, look at that. You cannot get better. Incredible. And if it wasn't the end of the day, I would have kept this to be up there with our number one spot in Corfu, which we'll share with you very soon. Wow. That was so crazy. One of my only regrets here was not visiting one of the restaurants you can see there behind me in the area of Canoni. So John and I spent hours researching a hotel and the best location to stay on the island and we still got it wrong. Well, not wrong, but I think you could learn from our mistake. We booked a hotel for our entire stay in the one area of Benitez because we thought geographically it was in the center of the island. Little did we realize that most of the attractions we wanted to see were further in the north. This was the entry to our hotel. That might be it, I think. Might be it. Do we go have a look? The staff were amazing. This was the view from our room. It was in a quiet, peaceful neighborhood and cheap, like a hundred dollars a night. And this was the beach nearby. We just walked down to the beach from our hotel, and I wanted to give you a real insight into what it's like down here. The beach is pebbles. There is attracted as behind us. We are here in May. Corfu is so random, don't you think? Despite the industrial feel, there is a nice strip of restaurants. Thank you. 
Beautiful, thank you so much. That looks so good. Cheers. But again, little did we realize just how far away everything is and how windy the roads are. So for example, it took us more than an hour just to drive from our hotel to Cape Drastus. So that's like a two hour return trip through the windy roads. Next time, I think we'd spend half the time on one side of the island and half the trip on the other, or stay in a more central location, possibly around Ipsos Beach. We baked in the sun and then we had a quick cool off, but this is a really trendy spot to have a coffee and just chill by the crystal clear water. Ipsos Beach is also relatively close to town. It's pretty central. So as you guys have probably realized, Corfu is not what we expected. There are no whitewashed walls like you see in Santorini or the beautiful Cocotic Islands. And Corfu is lush. In fact, its nickname is the Green Island. It has more rain than other Greek islands due to the mountains. And in terms of the architecture, there has been Venetian, French and British influences. And many countries took over and stamped their control right here. All right, let's go check out the old fortress of Corfu. These are currently the prices. An adult is six euro. That's pretty affordable for Europe. Oh wow, there is a canal. Oh wow, there is. Also known as a moat, a genius design. So it was a Venetian fortress that was actually built in the early 1500s. There were many seizures here. Around 200 years ago, the French briefly occupied Corfu before Russia took control. The cannon was casted in 1684, crazy. Before it was ceded to Greece 50 years later. But one of its major disasters was caused partly by mother nature. But I think one of the saddest things that I read about the fortress was that it was taken over by the Nazis in World War II. And this is where all the coffee and Jews were told to come. And when they arrived, they were imprisoned. They were told to hand over all their jewelry and the keys to their house. And then they were taken away to camps. We all know what happened after that and there were only around 150 coffee and Jews who returned after the war. Today around 100,000 people call Corfu home but during the summer the population swells along with the tourists with the old Corfu town a UNESCO World Heritage Site the busiest and most beautiful of cities literally a labyrinth of streets. There is going to be a lot to get through in this episode like I don't even know where to begin. Where like all this? John is pointing to the stunning architecture. It's like we're on a movie set. It was very touristy in here though. And after downing an overpriced pomegranate juice and an hour of strolling through the streets, it was back to the car. Speaking of which, if you have one, I'd recommend parking at the front of the Corfu Palace Hotel and just walking into the city. The on-street parking is free here and it's right next to the old fortress. Now let's quickly whiz past these next few spots on the list. John and I are boaties and we're always on the lookout for what our next boat will be. So strolling along the Via Marina is always a good idea. Of course, we're on holidays and we come straight to the uh, marina. Have a look at all the boats. Oh. There she is. It's a 45 foot version. Ah, the memories. Our boat was also a Sun Odyssey, only five foot bigger. If you're looking at sailing in Greece, we'd definitely highly recommend it. We chartered a yacht ourselves from Athens and sailed around the Kikladic Islands, including Milos and Mykonos. You can hire your own skipper or captain your own boat yourself with Navagara yachting. Our new $200 discount code is Christina's Travels. I'll leave a link to our sailing series in the description below if you want to go back and check it out. Now in the far northern part of Corfu is the cutest little seaside town of Cassiope. Cafes hug the cove as boats sway peacefully in the baking sun. And so we have just one more special place to show you that absolutely took our breath away. Wow, Corfu is turning it on for us today. Look at this weather. I feel like we definitely should have stayed in this area. Look at the kids playing in that little car thing over there. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. Yeah, we... This is the place to be, I think. What do you think? Yeah, I think you can just put another battery in and fly the train. <sighs> the water is so clear, but because it's still May, it's so cold. Oh my God, it's freezing. So refreshing. Far out, it is like ice. <laughs> so funny 
John is not sure if he can do it because it's so cold. It is literally half the temperature of the other side of the bay. <laughs> That's definitely making the car. This area is so stunning. I wish we spent the whole day here. So if you are coming to Corfu, I think this is definitely the place to position yourself. Beautiful restaurants on the waterfront, several beaches to choose from, and they are also clean and picturesque. So you're probably wondering, what is this place? We're in the area of Palio Castrizza. <laughs> but the next two islands we're about to drive you to, in my opinion, are even more beautiful than Corfu and are a must if you're on the west coast of Greece. We've just booked our ferry tickets online, which has been a little painful and expensive. Yeah. But we got there. So this is probably the worst thing about leaving things the last minute, but also I think this would be quite difficult to do before you've even arrived to Greece, wouldn't you say, John? Oh yeah, because you just you have to know what's what and how much time you need and stuff. Yeah, exactly, and then you have to follow a timeline. We just spent, was it 230 euro? Yeah. On five ferries. The car is probably the most expensive thing. Like to get the car from each island is around 30, 35 euro, and then it's like another 10 euro per person. We just used, um, is it fairies? Fairy scanner. Fairy yeah, scanner. The same price is fucking correct. We'd love your support, guys. Click that like button if you got something out of this video. It's completely free and it supports us immensely. And coming up, we're taking you to Zakynthos and Kefalonia. <laughs> and next week, you might want to join us for a very special Q&A. John and I will be joining our patrons live from a very special destination on board a very special new boat in real time. Thank you to all our patrons, including our stars, for your support and to the sponsor of this video, AG1.